we began talking about probably the most complicated part of the unit on Friday. Call it standing waves. We saw a demonstration of standing waves on Thursday and on Friday where we sent waves down from a mechanical wave generator towards a barrier. They reflected back and they interfered with the waves that were still going down. So we have waves going this way, we have waves coming back off of the reflected boundary this way, and they're going to interfere with each other to produce an interference pattern. We could use the superposition principle to figure out what that pattern was going to look like, but it's complicated for this situation, so we probably wouldn't bother doing that. We know, though, that if we have uh, a frequency of a wave, uh, sorry, a, a wave at a, at a, at most frequencies, we're going to get what appears to be uh, a random interference pattern. It's not random, okay? it's predictable, but it appears to be random. But if we send the wave down this way at a very special, unique frequency, then it's going to reflect back at the same frequency and produce this interference pattern that makes the waves appear to be standing still. They're not standing still, but they look like they're standing still. Now, when we see this interference pattern, this standing wave that we see, we know that it occurs at this special frequency that we're going to call the resonant frequency. The natural frequency of anything is called the resonant frequency. The natural frequency of the string is the resonant frequency of the string. There are more than one resonant frequency of the string. There's the first harmonic, as we saw on Friday. There's the second harmonic, and so on. We'll deal with that in a little bit more detail in just a second. Just label a couple parts of this standing wave here first. Okay, the wave, the part of the wave that is constantly going up and down like this, from crest to cross, crest to trough to crest to trough, crest to trough, the area of constructive interference is what we call an antinode. These areas right here that are not moving, in other words, they're areas of complete destructive interference, we would call those nodes. Constructive interference, antinode, destructive interference node. Now, what we see right here has four antinodes and five nodes. This would actually be the fifth harmonic. The first harmonic that we would see, the first standing wave of the first harmonic would look like this. The second one would look like this. The third one would look like this, and so on and so on and so on. We learned on Friday how to figure out what frequency these would occur at. Okay, remember that at most frequencies, we get what appears to be a random pattern. But at specific frequencies, the resonant frequencies, we get things that look like this, waves that appear to be standing still. We call this the length of the string. And we said the length of the string in this case was a half of a wave. In this case, it was a full wave. In this case, it was one and a half or three over two waves. Then we rearranged it. Then we said lambda is equal to 2L, or lambda is equal to L, or lambda is equal to 2 thirds L. And then we subbed in, and we subbed in um, the expression for lambda. So in this case, we would have said V over lambda or V over 2L. In this case, we would have said V over lambda or V over L. In this case, we would have said V over 2 thirds L, or let's simplify that a little bit and get 3V over 2L. And we noticed on Friday that there was a pattern formed here. This we call the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. Uh, sorry, the, um, the fundamental frequency, not the first harmonic. Um, no, sorry, it is the first harmonic, yes. The fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. This one would be the second harmonic, which has a value of twice the first harmonic. And this would be the third harmonic, which has a value of three times the first harmonic. And so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, we saw this with our own eyes, and now we can predict what frequency these standing waves will occur at. On Friday, we completed the example. The one thing that I wanted to point out with this example, again, before I give you a worksheet to work, to work on here for a few minutes, is that uh, you can see that we were looking for the first three possibilities for harmonics. The first harmonic, the first harmonic is found by deriving the equation, right? Just like we did a minute ago, just like we did right here, the first harmonic is v over lambda or v over 2 times L. You can find the value of the first harmonic just like that. 
Now you can find the value of the second harmonic by deriving the equation for the second harmonic like this, or this is the way that I would suggest you do it is once you have the value of the, for the first harmonic, take that value as in this case of a thousand hertz and then multiply it by two because the second harmonic is always going to be twice the first. So if you want to derive the equation, go ahead. If you want to just multiply the first harmonic by two, go ahead. All right, make sense? Third harmonic, I'll obviously multiply it by three. The 17th harmonic, you would multiply it by 17. What if they did this? What if the question said the value of the fifth harmonic is 5,000 hertz? What's the value of the, of the first harmonic? What would you do then? Would you derive an equation then? The value of the fifth is 5,000. What's the value of the first harmonic? Rosie? Probably just divide it by five, right? Because the first is going to be one-fifth of the, the fifth harmonic. Here's one for you. What if they said the value of the fifth harmonic is 5,000? What's the value of the second harmonic? Anybody know how we go about doing that one? It's not much harder. Yeah. Good. Let's divide it by five to get the first harmonic. And then we would say the second harmonic is twice the first harmonic. Don't worry about the fifth harmonic anymore once you've got the first, right? So it's going to be two times a thousand, which is two thousand hertz. Make sense? Some people like to just remember the equation for the first harmonic because in the end, that's all you really got to be able to do is the first harmonic. I would still suggest you derive the equation. It's not on your data sheet. I would suggest you derive it because in a little while, after you've been working on the sheet for a little while, you're going to get another equation for the first harmonic of a different kind of standing wave, which is going to look a little bit different. So derive the equation, and then just remember the second is twice, the third is three times. Either multiply by two or three or divide by two or three, depending upon which way you're going. All right, if you guys are all okay with those questions involving standing waves and strings, like the guitar string, then let's take a look at what a standing wave might look like in a musical instrument. In most musical instruments, like a, uh, like a brass instrument or a woodwind instrument, where you blow into one end and there's an open end at the other end. Okay, first of all, it's different than something like a guitar because you're not getting standing waves set up in a string. You're getting standing waves set up in air. Okay? And secondly, in a guitar, the string is attached at both ends in, a, in, a, in most musical instruments that involve blowing into. You're going to have one end that's completely wide open. So the standing wave pattern that you see is going to end up being a little bit different. First of all, it's harder to physically see it in these ones because we're talking about standing waves with air. But if we could see it, it would look a little bit different than what we would see with the guitar strings. The first standing wave in a guitar string or anything that's attached at both ends The standing wave set up in the instrument that's open at one, and it's going to look like this. I wish I could show you physically what it would look like, but we can't because we can't see the air. What we have uh, when we have a guitar string that's attached at both ends is a node at both ends and an antinode in the middle. When we have an air column, like a musical instrument that's attached, sorry, that's open at one end, we have a node at the closed end, and we have an anti-node at the open end. Okay, we always have this interference pattern produced that looks like this. Now, if it's at a certain frequency, the resonant frequency, we blow into the end of it, we get all kinds of frequencies set up, most of the frequencies disappear, just like in the guitar string when I pluck it, the only ones that stick around are the ones that correspond to the resonant frequencies, like this one, like the first harmonic. But this time, it's got an anti-node at one end instead of a node at both ends. The second one that we're going to see, by the way, is going to look something like this, where we had one anti-node, now we have two anti-nodes. The third one that we're going to see is going to look something like this, where we had two anti-nodes, now we're going to have three anti-nodes. Notice there's still a node at the closed end, that's where you blow into the instrument, Okay, and you have an anti-node at the open end where the air comes out the other end. So the air is going back and forth, reflecting off of the boundary between the instrument and outside the instrument, comes back, interferes, produces its interference pattern at the right frequency that corresponds to a standing wave. Now we're going to derive equations just like we did for the 
the string, setting the length of the column, not the length of the string, but the length of the air column equal to L, and then setting L equal to, well, however many waves that is. I'm going to draw a wave over here, just like I did, just like I did uh, for the last one, for the string. And I want to identify how much of a wave I have in each of these cases here. Okay, in the first case, when I'm going from node to anti-node, how much of a wave is that? Is that a full wave? Is that a half a wave? What is that? That's a quarter of a wave, right? We're going from here to the top of a crest. I would have to go down to the equilibrium, down to the bottom of a trough, and then back up to the equilibrium to get a full wave. This is a quarter of a wave. So we're going to say L is equal to one quarter lambda this time. Remember the last time it was one half lambda? But our picture looked different too, right? Next one, what are we going to say? Well, we're going from equilibrium back through here and then back down to here. How much of a wave would that be? That's going to be three quarters, isn't it? Like to go up here would be a full wave. This is going to be three quarters of a wave. So let's say L is equal to three quarters of lambda. And then for this one, well, we're going to say we're going from here up to here. That's that's a complete wave. And then we're going another quarter of a wave. So one and a quarter waves, which means if I express it as an improper fraction, it would be five over four lambda. Let's rearrange these to solve for lambda. Lambda is equal to four times L. Lambda is equal to four-thirds times L, and lambda is equal to four-fifths times L if I rearrange them to solve for lambda. And then I'll do the same thing as I did with the string. F is equal to V over lambda, or in this case, F is equal to V over 4L. I don't know if you remember, but the first frequency for the string was V over 2L. Now it's V over 4L. This is the reason why I don't really want you to remember or memorize the equations. Even though they don't appear on your data sheet, I want you to derive the equations because try to memorize it. You're going to get this one mixed up with the V over 2L and apply it in the wrong spot. Take a look at the next one. V over lambda would be V over 4 thirds L. And if I simplify that a little bit, it's going to be 3V over 4L. And the next one, F is equal to V over lambda or V over four-fifths L. We're going to simplify this a little bit. We're going to say F is equal to V over, sorry, 5V over 4L. What do you notice about this one? Well, this is the first harmonic. The next one is not twice the first harmonic, but notice V over 4L, 3V over 4L. The next one's going to be three times the first harmonic, and the next one's going to be five times the first harmonic. We're not going to call this the second harmonic. We're going to call it the third, and we're going to call this one the fifth harmonic. Here's the deal. When you have a guitar or something like a guitar, the baseball bat, the whatever it is, it's, the meter stick that's vibrating, whatever it is that's vibrating, if it's attached at both ends, we get a first harmonic, a second harmonic, a third harmonic, a fourth harmonic, and so on. But if you have something like an air column that's, that's fixed at one end, it's closed at one end, but it's wide open at the other end, then we don't get any even harmonics. You pluck the guitar string, you hear the first, second, third harmonic. You blow into a tuba, you hear the first, the third, the fifth harmonic. There are no even harmonics. Now, how do we end up solving these problems? Well, the same way as we solved the string problems. But remember, first of all, the, the equation for the first harmonic is different. Instead of v, being V over 2L, it's V over 4L. And second of all, remember that when you're asked for the first three harmonics, let's say, don't take the first one and multiply it by 2 and by 3. Take the first one and multiply it by 3 and by 5 to get the, the, the second possibility and the third possibility because there are no even harmonics, right? Are you okay with that? I want to show you one more scenario here, and then I'll set you free to work on some questions on that worksheet again here. This time we have um, air columns, like maybe it's like a pipe where it's open at both ends. Most musical instruments that aren't string-based, that are air-based, are going to be open at one end and closed at the other, right? You blow onto a... Um, 
uh, a uh, clarinet and it's fixed at one end, it's closed at one end. The reed makes it closed at one end, but the other end is, is open. Okay, most musical instruments are like that. But if you blow across the end of a pipe and expect it to make a sound, it will. Blow across the end of a pipe, it, it'll make a sound. It's going to make a sound that's a little bit different than most musical instruments because it's not closed at one end and, and open at the other. It's open at both ends. What are we going to see for the first harmonic here? Well, the first one is going to look like this. Remember, we have to have an antinode at an open end. We had an antinode at the open end right here. We had a node at the closed end. Here we have two open ends, so we have to have two antinodes. The next one that we're going to see is three antinodes. The next one that we're going to see is four antinodes. And so on and so on and so on. Once again, we could derive an equation based on the length of this. This is going to be a half of a wave. This is going to be a complete wave. This is going to be a wave and a half. Rearrange is a solve for lambda. And then sub it into v equals, v equals f times lambda. What do we end up getting here? Well, we end up getting the exact same thing as we got with a string, like a guitar, where we have the first harmonic is V over 2L. We'll call that F1. The second harmonic is twice the value of the first harmonic. And the third harmonic is three times the value of the first harmonic. The only difference between the sound that you would hear in a musical instrument like this versus a guitar based on its length is, is the speed of the wave. The speed of the wave in a guitar string is dramatically different than the speed of the wave in a tuba, which means that if we have a tuba of a certain length and we have a guitar string of a certain length, we're going to hear a dramatically different sound because they have dramatically different resonant frequencies based on their dramatically different speeds. But the equations that describe them are exactly the same, right? So if it's open at both ends or if it's fixed at both ends like the guitar string, this is the setup. If it's open at one end and closed at the other end, then this is the setup. V over 2L versus V over 4L. Yep. Just one sec here. If you, if you wait, just one sec. Yep. Oh, sorry, it doesn't equal the first harmonic. That's a mistake. Thank you. Uh, F2 doesn't equal F1. F2 should equal, what should I put there, Jenna? 2 times F1, yes. Thank you. Now, i got to introduce another equation now, um, just because we're talking about air columns. This didn't apply when we were talking about guitar strings. It only, it only applies when we're talking about air. The equation is, is going to help us to find the speed of sound in air, if necessary. Sometimes we're already going to be given the value, sometimes you've got to find it. The speed of sound in air, not in a guitar string or anything else, but in air, is going to be equal to 331 plus 0 0.6 times the temperature. And the temperature... is going to be measured in degrees Celsius. So let's say the temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. We would say the speed of sound is 331 plus 0 0.6 times 20, which ends up giving me 343 meters per second. So under standard atmospheric pressure, the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius would give us a speed of sound of 343 meters per second. That's not unique to standing waves. That's just an equation that allows us to find the speed of sound in air. Okay, but now that we're talking about air columns and standing waves in air, you're going to have to use that sometimes to find that speed of sound.
All right, let's uh, take a look at an example here. It's not in your book. It says, what are the frequencies of the first two harmonics observed in a 40 centimeter long air column if the temperature of the air is 30 degrees Celsius? I should have told you in this question that it's a closed air column. An open air column means it's open at both ends. A closed air column means it's open at one end and, and closed at the other. So closed kind of means kind of sounds like it's closed at both ends, but it's not. Closed is open at one end, closed at the other. Open air column is open at both ends. Let's do this now. Remember we said the strategy is generally to draw the diagram first. So here's my diagram. A closed air column is going to have my first harmonic looking like this, where we say L is equal to one quarter of a wave, and lambda is therefore equal to four times L. F is equal to V over lambda, which means that f is equal to v over 4 times l. Let's find the, the frequency of the first harmonic. But before we do that, let's get the speed of the wave. The speed of the sound inside this air column is 331 plus 0 0.6 times the temperature. 331 plus 0 0.6 times 30. 0 0.6 times 30 is uh, 18. Uh, so I think it's 349 meters per second. Let's say 349 meters per second divided by 4 times the length, which is 0 0.40 meters. Let's figure out what that is now. Use some brackets on the bottom there. We get 218.125. which rounded to three digits is 218 hertz. All right, there's the first harmonic. What are the, what's the next harmonic that we would hear or that we would see? If it was closed at both, sorry, open at both ends or attached at both ends, the next one we would see would be the second harmonic. But since we have two ends that are different, we don't have even numbered harmonics. Instead of multiplying this number by two, we're going to multiply this number by three. The next harmonic that we would see would be the third harmonic. 218 times 3 is 654. So if this is a guitar, double it. If this is uh, an instrument where it's open at one end and closed at the other end, then triple it to get the second, not the second harmonic, but the second possibility, the, the next harmonic, which is the third one. All right, let's have a look at the back side of that worksheet now, keeping in mind that that back side includes two types of air columns, open and closed. So you got to pay attention to which one it is. If it's open, and it's open at both ends, and the equations are the same as they were for the strings on the front of the page. If it's closed, then we're dealing with a situation like this, where V is equal to, or F is equal to V over 4L instead of V over 2L. And there are no even harmonics.